Hey, welcome to this old shop. Today we got another episode about uh, we're gonna make a stainless steel tubing setup here for a customer. It's got a quarter inch stainless steel tubing that's 30 thousandths thickness wall. It's got two 37 degree flare steel ends and a 37 degree male flare right there as you can tell. Some of the tools we're gonna be using today, we're gonna use our hacksaw pretty basic. Then we got our, our tubing flare uh, tool here. It's pretty neat. You can see it's marked with all the different sizes. And um, it's got little ribs in there that catch the tubing and you lock it down. And this unit, see it's got a cone in there that actually flares out the tubing. We've got a basic tubing cutter, metal file, trusty 420 channel locks, 10 inch crescent wrench. Okay, so we got our quarter inch tubing bender here made by uh, Parker Hannafin. It's a pretty neat little device that lets me make zero to 180 degree bends really precisely. It makes it look nice and good. Tape measure, Sharpie marker, and then uh, I got this tough set high performance pipe thread sealant. This stuff is really good. Uh, we've used a lot of different ones and this is the best one. It's rated for 10,000 PSI, 40 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really good stuff. All right, so let's get started here. I got some new fittings here. I've got quarter compression by quarter compression by quarter inch male female, or uh, excuse me, male connector to female pipe. So this is gonna take up that part there. Then we got some new tubing nuts that we're gonna put here to make the bend nice and uh, leak, leak proof. So the first thing we gotta do is cut some stainless steel tubing. I got a 20 foot stick here. And we're gonna cut up. So let's start down here on this end. A couple tricks of doing this I'm gonna show you. Oh, and by the way, we got a new cameraman. The other guy really sucked at it, so we had to fire him. Well, that's okay. All right, so what we're going to do here is use our, uh, our tool to hold it while we cut it. It's also going to act as a, as a fence. It's a nice straight cut. All right. You can see it's in the quarter inch slot. Nice and tight in there. All right. I'm just going to use very light pressure so we don't mess up the tubing around this. It's very important. I'm going to keep the blade up against here so it's nice and flat. Real light pressure. Now, it's a straight cut. Now, as you can see, it left a bunch of those burrs that we'll clean up with the file here. Well, let's cut another piece because we're going to need two of these. Loosen this up. Put it in the quarter inch slot. Come about the same length here. Same procedure, nice light pressure.
And notice right here, I'm not just ripping it off, I'm letting the salt cut it so we don't have a big burr. Nice straight cut, you see it's got the same burrs on the end that we'll fix. Okay, so we're done with that stick. We got our two pieces here, let's go back over here. Now what I'm going to do is use this file and kind of clean up the edges. We'll take a little bit before and see all those burrs. You can see it's starting to clean up real nice. The edges aren't sharp anymore. If you can tell, but I kind of chamfered that edge a little bit. See how it's not cutting me, it's nice and good. And then I'm going to bore out the inside a little bit to clean it up. This normal uh, tubing cutter has a has a deeper tool. Slips in there and you twist it. It's got a little cutting edge. As you can see, it's a nice, good edge right there. And we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Good edge. And deeper the inside. Okay, we got, we got two of them cleaned up. I cleaned up one off camera. All right, so you see they're nice and pretty on those edges. Now something you don't want to do with stainless is you don't want to use this type of cutter when you're trying to do a flare fitting. I'll cut a piece I can show you. As you can tell, it, it rounds it out, see that? And then when you go to flare it, it work, it's work hardened so it, doesn't, it won't flare out. It'll just push out and you'll end up with something like that. It's off-centered, it squeezed it, messed it up. Okay, so if you want to come over here, here's the fittings we're going to use. Let's mark it so we can get a good bend in it. We need the same angle so it'll fit right. So what we'll do, put those in there where they go. We're going to line them up. starts. Okay. Then that bend starts right there. Starts right about there. Okay. I'm going to use our tubing bender here. It's a really great little tool here. It works well. I'm going to line it up with the zero where the bend starts. See the zero right there? Then lock it in. Okay. And then it, it's marked zero to 180. I'm going to do a 90 degree bend. So locked in. Just going to do it like so until it reaches about 90. Then you want to go just slightly past it because there's some spring in that tubing. And make sure you get a good bend. And you pop it out. And that's what you get, a nice, good-looking bend. Just line it up and make sure that's right. Double-check our marks. You want to move this mark back a little bit so it lines up properly.
same procedure. Run my markup on the zero. And then a 90 degree bend once more. Run a little bit past to overcompensate for the spring. Okay. Now if you can tell, if you want to get right on top of it so you can see where they line up. It lines up really good right there and right there, which is what the whole purpose of this is. Okay. So what we'll do now to we'll lock these pieces in. Let's do that. Let's do it in a vise, it'll be easier. Maybe a trusty vise. So what happens is as we tighten this nut, it squeezes a ferrule inside there that squeezes against the tubing and locks it in and it's rated for about I think it's 4,100 PSI, which is plenty for this application. So you go down until it gets tight, and you give it about a quarter turn more. It's locked in. Same thing on the other side. Take it all the way in. Go until you feel it tightened down, and give it about another quarter turn. Locked in nice and tight. See, now we got our two uprights. Next, for the flare, I bought some new nuts in the backer pieces. So the nut slips on like that. Then there's this backer piece that's got the flare connection. You see like with the fitting here, they mate together and that's what forms a seal with the tubing flared in between them. So this piece slips on first. Oh, excuse me, the nut slips on first and the backer piece slips on. Doesn't need to be quite that long, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut it down a little bit and then re-flare re it. Okay, we cut the pieces down to length. Now we're gonna put on our nut and backer piece. We're gonna flare it out. All right, take my tool here. And we're gonna find a quarter inch. It takes a little bit of practice to get the right height here. But. Stick it over right. And clamp it down. Clamped in there in the quarter inch, so I'm going to take the flare tool, put it in there. As you can see, it's got that cone that's to the right angle. It's pretty much self centering. You get it started in there, let it lock itself in, and you crank it down until it stops. It gets pretty tricky to harden the tubing. <clears throat> Here we go. Bottom down. As you can see, it flared it nice and straight. This is what we're looking for here. So you see that bagger piece backs up against it, the nut. And then you have your fitting. 
tightens up against it nice and leak tight when it's tightened down. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And a quarter inch slot. You get the right height again. Lock it down. All right, we fast forward a little bit here, and here's our finished product. We got two of them flared, they're nice and even. Take the old one here and match it up. As you can see, it matches up perfectly, which is what we wanted. So we got perfect angles, good measurement. Last thing is we'll go pressure test it. Right, follow me. So we'll put some pressure on it and make sure it's leak free. Fittings. Two caps here, and then we're going to tighten up these fittings. Pressure hand pump with a calibrated pressure gauge here. It's rated for uh, 5,000 psi. We probably won't take it up that high. Customers using it around 100 psi. All right. You can be able to see that. I'll pump it up here, get the pressure up. Oh, got a little leak. Let me tighten this fitting up. So we got about 500 psi. There's no leaks. She's still at 500 psi. So that's it. That's the finished product. So uh, that's this old shop, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, and uh, thanks.